Alright, so today I thought I'd have a look at Koyonis Gatsi and the Koyonis Gatsi remake. Now these aren't going to be deep dives into these, they're merely going to be my impressions, I'll do a comparison and let you know which ones are worth your time really. So let's get started with Koyonis Gatsi, the 1982 film directed by uh, Godfrey Reggio who later went on to do the sequels to this and a bunch more artsy documentary style films. Uh, the music's by Philip Glass, very famous experimental composer and won a ton of awards for this. And the cinematographer is a fellow called Ron Frick and he went on to do uh, a film called Samsara which is very, very comparable, that word. Um, you can compare it quite a lot to Koenis Gatsi, very similar sort of style. And it's also presented by Francis Ford Coppola, probably heard of him. He's obviously famous for making The Godfather, Apocalypse Now and Sofia Coppola. Now I have seen this before when I was in school a long time ago. My film studies teacher actually said uh, it's a film that you'll never be able to just watch. You'll always find something else in your house to do while it's on. And I took that as a bit of a challenge, went home that night and watched it just watched it without doing anything else and I mean I must have liked it because I bought it and I haven't seen it since then so this is going to be quite interesting it's been a good few years since I've watched this so I'm going to go watch this and I'll come back and I'll let you know my thoughts alright so I've just watched Koenis Gatsu again and it's it's a tricky film to talk about really because it's such a unique piece of film. Uh, it doesn't have a conventional narrative to it. I guess there's there is a underlying narrative throughout, you know, moving from like cave paintings to nature and to like industry, then into built up areas with lots and lots of people, then through into poorer areas with fewer people, then into sort of abandoned areas with derelict buildings then back into the cities again and then technology involved and that kind of pushes us towards the end with the whole back to the cave paintings again. Um, so I guess there's, there's the theme throughout of sort of mankind and the evolution and like how, how we've evolved as a species and also like what we're doing on the planet to the planet. So I, I guess there is sort of a, a through line through it to cut, sort of guide you through so you're not just watching random images. Uh, obviously there's no actors, as well. I mean, there's people in this, they're not really actors, they're just sort of staring at the camera for the length of time that they're on, on screen. Um, it's, it's weird as well, because it's hard to make comparisons with a film like this, but I did have a few comparisons, like throughout the beginning with some of the nature shots, I, it felt like the intro to a, an Attenborough documentary without any narration. And later on, Funnily enough, it did remind me of Akira with the big shots of the skyscrapers and the sort of chanting music in the background. And the music is definitely something that sort of helps guide you through it as well. Like, the music's probably one of my favourite parts of this film, like Philip Glass. You can see why he won awards for this. Uh, the music, in, in a sense, it's kind of informing you on. Not necessarily how to feel, but it's kind of nudging you towards a certain sort of feeling. So at the beginning, the music's quite, quite uh, dramatic. It's got a lot of sort of like almost Gregorian chanting of the Koyonis Gatsi name, and and then that sort of um, that makes the everything seem a lot grander, a lot bigger. Uh, and then you know the music changes to quite silly at some points, uh, which is an interesting sort of move um, for when there's a lot of people buzzling around, but that morphs into something that just builds and builds and builds in tension and it, at one point it feels like the film's just going to explode with the fast cuts, the fast edits and the rapidly moving music. Um, so overall I, uh, I definitely enjoyed it, I definitely got something from it. Uh, throughout it I was thinking, oh maybe it's not ham-fisting in its message or maybe it's not really got a message, it's just presenting the, fact, like, the things, the images to you and wanting to make your own conclusions. But then at the end it comes up with the, the title, Koenis Gatsi, and what it means, and it's a word that means uh, life out of balance. 
um, life in turmoil and that sort of thing, which, and there's a few quotes as well, I can't remember the quotes exactly, but it's something along the lines of, um, like, if, if you dig the earth, the earth will kill you, basically, so I guess the, the theme is the sort of, that we're maybe destroying the planet, or we're ruining it in some sense anyway. Which, I don't know, I, I'd have liked it more if it was just presenting you these images and hoping that you'd make your own conclusions. But I guess it has got its own agenda in there. Um, overall though, yeah, I'd say it's a, a really interesting film. I'd like to get my hands on the Blu-ray, because I think that the like, enhancement to the visuals would be a big plus to say that the film is mostly visuals. I think it'd be a, a really good idea. I think Harrow have put out a, a nice Blu-ray set of that in the UK, so probably grab that at some point. And I also won't mind watching the sequels now, seeing that. So from there, I think we'll move on to the remake. Okay, so the Coyonis Gatsy remake. How can you remake a film like Coyonis Gatsy? Well, the people at Lush had the idea of remaking Coyonis Gatsy as a bath bomb. Um, it doesn't say who directed this, and it doesn't have a runtime or anything like that. It does have a little synopsis about uh, the water running over your shower bomb. Take a deep breath, allow the essential oils sur to surround you. It's kind of cut off though, so the packaging's not great for this. Uh, I'd say that the straight out the bat the DVD had much better packaging um, yeah I don't know who direct I don't, I'm not entirely sure what year uh, this was released either uh, I think well I found out about it uh, during Christmas of 2018 uh, so I'm not entirely sure how long this has been out um, and I'm not entirely sure how it's going to compare so what I'm going to do is I uh, I'm going to take a shower, I don't know if I said bath bomb earlier, it's a shower bomb. So I'm going to take a shower and try this out. Uh, first of all, should we have a look at it? Because I haven't actually looked at this yet. So just give me, give me one second. So just make sure you can see that there, yep. I'd say that packaging is probably a big part of this. So you, you're going to get to see my initial reactions straight on the, straight off the bat for this. I'm not really, not really getting much of a smell from this one. Um, okay, so the shower bomb itself, if you can see that, it's going everywhere. It's sort of a spiral, spiral shape. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, the, so the, there is definitely a smell to this. Um, I, I don't think the original cast and crew were involved in this. I, I'm not seeing... Francis Ford Coppola anywhere, or Philip Glass or anything like that. I'm wondering if the soundtrack's going to live up to this, really. That's the big the big thing for me, because that soundtrack was fantastic in the original, and I don't know how you're planning on redoing the soundtrack uh, in your shower bomb. Uh, but I'm going to go now and uh, try this, and I'll come back and let you know my thoughts. Right, so I've just experienced the Coyonis Gatsy remake. So straight off the bat, I want to say runtime. So Coyonis Gatsy, the original, comes in at one hour and twenty-three minutes. The remake is about two minutes. So, like, I got it. I, like when I was in the shower, it was in my hand, and it turned to foam. So I started rubbing it, and I couldn't really smell much from it and within two minutes it was gone and in two minutes maybe being generous um, the themes were like I, I, I could sort of see a hint of the themes of the original being reflected in this you know the idea of mankind's dominance over nature and the idea of sort of like industrialization not necessarily being the best thing that sort of thing you know but it only hinted at it and then before you know it it was gone soundtrack wise Philip Glass definitely not attached to this even though the, there are no credits on the packaging you can see why as well and I'm guessing that none of the original 
cast and crew were actually involved in this and I'm not surprised it it doesn't feel at all the same it did wash over me I did get that sort of sense of being washed over but I was saying about the soundtrack wasn't it yeah there was a, a slight fizz coming from it and then it was gone honestly it was a bit difficult to handle in the shower uh, I kept feeling like I was gonna drop it and it just it just didn't live up to any of it really and um, I do feel clean now but I don't feel any cleaner than I would have with another product. Um, so obviously the name Koenis Gatsu attached to this is a bit strange. Uh, I hate it when they do remakes and just call it the same thing as well. It's kind of annoying because then you're going to get confused. I'm going to have to explain which one I'm talking about to people now whenever I mention it. Um, yeah, overall just, just a big disappointment really. Um, yeah, the, the smell was very subtle, uh, music was lacking, the visuals were lacking, it, like, there weren't any visuals really, it fizzed a bit, there was a bit of foam, and then it was gone. Very short, very disappointed. Um, so what I've done is I've come up with a little uh, tally chart uh, for both the original and the remake, and I'm going to sort of pit them against each other in various categories that I've made up. So I, um, I have that here. So the first category uh, is visuals. So the original, the visuals were stunning, they were amazing, the visuals were incredible. Um, so much said in such slow shots, such minimal camera work, but done really well. And I forgot to mention originally that there's a lot of speed up slow down shots, a lot of sort of light trails, fast moving cars that's been sped up and it works really well. The remake, so for the original I gave 5 out of 5 marks. The remake I gave 1 because it foamed a little bit, kind of entertaining. Outside of that, mm, not really feeling it. Uh, the next category I'm going for is music. Uh, which is a four, I gave a four to the original because the music was fantastic. There were a few few notes, a few moments in there where, you know, some of the more lighthearted stuff. I don't know. I didn't feel like it worked all too well. Um, but Philip Glass, absolutely fantastic in that, and yeah, it, it blew me away. The remake I gave a zero because that fizz just didn't cut it for me. Clearly was just trying to copy Philip Glass, clearly didn't come off right, clearly didn't work, not a fan. So the, the next category I've got is smell for the original. So uh, I, I have smell the original and yeah, there, there is no smell, there is no smell. It smells a bit like a DVD case and it's a bit lacking in that regard really. Um, the, but then moving on to the remake there wasn't much of a smell for that either really like so I'm guessing I guess it's kind of keeping up with the original but it did it did have a bit of a soapy smell a bit of a sort of clean smell so I, in the end I gave that one a two for the remake uh, cleanliness now uh, I gave a one to the original just kind of wash over you just sort of refresh your mind makes you think about things so I, I gave that one a one the remake I gave a three because I feel pretty clean it did its job, not no no better than a decent bar of soap or you know a bottle of uh, shower gel would do, but it did its job. And then overall feel is my last category, and I gave the original a four, curse. It has got a really good feel through it, and it did make me think about things, and it just it feels nice to watch. It feels nice to chill out, relax, and watch it. And for the remake, I gave a two, because. I'm feeling a bit itchy from it, and you know I feel clean, but that's like that's it. And you know the themes, the feeling for the themes of the remake were there's not many of them. There's like you know it's it's lacking in that. So overall, um, the scores for the original I gave 14, and for the remake eight. So there is a clear winner here, and I would definitely definitely recommend going out and checking out Koenis Gatze, if anything I've said in the review interests you. It's not for everyone, it may bore you, it may make you want to do something else in your house, but it's worth a go, it's worth a go. As for the remake, 
I would say avoid it unless you find it cheap and you're interested. But realistically, there's nothing really going for it. Uh, so I'll finish up here. Uh, thanks for watching.